Hello and welcome to Game Speak. I am Layman Kingsford, the owner of Cheeky Dingo Games, and today I am going to chat with you some about my big megalithic gaming and fiction story creation that I've entitled Living Saga because it encompasses three different properties, if you will. Living Empires, which is a fantasy thing, uh, Living Metropolis, which is a contemporary superhero setting, and Living Starship, which is a science fiction futuristic setting. But all of them are based in the same cosmos. They, it all starts with all the people inhabiting the little fantasy world called Everstrom. And I'm going to focus today on queer representation. When I first started creating elements of this, um, I of course wanted to include um, queer representative characters um, and some storylines. Didn't want to make a big deal of it, didn't want to call out to it, I just wanted it to be normal and just hanging out there, you know, so this this male character likes another male character, this female character likes another female character, whatever. Um, but there was also the marketing side of me that, that re recognized that, hey, if I lean too heavily in that direction, I'm potentially uh, alienating a big chunk of the audience. Keep in mind that I've been working on this for like 20 years. So the world we live in today, in 2021, yeah, is is somewhat different than certainly when I grew up in you know, 40 years ago, um, and certainly somewhat different than even 20 years ago. Uh, queer acceptance is so much broader, not not great still, but so much broader and growing. Um, and so even lately, some more recent years, that uh, I'm, I'm going to lean a little more heavily into that because again, marketing side says, hey, that's an audience that is, myself included, that is hungry to see more of themselves in, in our genre fiction. And just recently, like in the past year or so, especially as I've been working with a lot more trans people through a, a, a or the All Night Alliance, a nonprofit organization I'm the artistic director of, and I'm living with a trans person, um, one of my roommates is, and I've examined things even more deeply than I had in the past, and you know, we're seeing a lot of TV shows and movies with, with queer characters, um, even in the genre stuff, uh, lesbian-led uh, show like uh, Batwoman, which is awesome. We still don't see much in the way of, of really non-stereotypical representation of gay male characters, um, except in Star Trek Discovery, where I, I really feel like overall that's being handled in a way that makes me happy. Or you know, bisexual and trans characters. There are some shows, not quite genre necessarily, but things like Pose, which are addressing so much of what trans people and that culture has gone through and continues to go through. Um, bisexual stuff, they've maybe gotten a little bit more, if they're female bisexual characters, far more frequent than male bisexual characters, but in genre stuff, ostensibly we have Lucifer, a TV show, it's the DC comics version, loosely version of, of Lucifer, who's canonically bisexual, but that show overall fails to handle his bisexuality with any sort of um, decency, it, I don't think. Um, and we've got like Constantine, uh, had his own TV show, which just sort of avoided his sexuality altogether. And then when they brought him on to uh, Legends of Tomorrow in the Arrowverse, and it finally started getting handled better. Um, even saved the world by kissing his boyfriend. Um, so that was cool. And he just much more obviously flirts with character, male and female characters and everything in between, including there's a little nudge and a wink about him and King Shark, which hmm, that, it's interesting to contemplate. Uh, anyway, so in, in my creations for Living Saga, I've recently decided, you know what? I'm, despite the hit it might take in terms of acceptability, um, I'm going to lean even more heavily into the, the queerness, the LGBTQ plus representation. So much so that it's actually helping me f 
focus and hone a lot of the themes I want to address and how I'm structuring the world and how it evolves. So I'm going to share a, a graphic here with you. There we go. So I've created a little bit of a outline here of, of the three branches of my story. The early fantasy is the setting of the single world of empires um, that, that evolves into the contemporary city-based uh, still single world of, of living metropolis, which then evolves into the galaxy spanning, uh, uh, which then evolves into the galaxy spanning uh, society of living starship, where the races from this world have evolved and gone to populate the stars, as it were. So in living empires, and so I've broken this down into sort of three broad, four broad cat, I can count, I swear, four broad categories of race, gender, sex, meaning the act of sexual intercourse, um, and sort of broadly culture. Um, and how each of these societies view and treat these, these sorts of things are sort of going to be the crux of what each of the settings, and hence the story and game themes are, ba I mean, the story-based game themes are based on. Um, so first off, in Living Empires, we've got the world, the base world, where there are elves, dwarves, humans, goblins, uh, trolls, and ogres uh, living all together. And what did divides this world, so their racism didn't exist in the way we might acknowledge. I wanted to create a version of a world where, hey, I mean, it's, I forgive the term human nature, because these aren't all humans in here, but human nature to... Uh, fear the other or what's different than you or what's different than your own so that I want I don't want that to be based on race which in in high fantasy is normally you know, the elves and the goblins have been at war with each other for millennia or whatever uh, how can I do this differently um, so I came up with the notion which I've talked about in other videos um, and you can check more on the website cheekydingo.com um, but the signs sort of like in my own version of the zodiac or elemental signs of wind, flame, wave, stone, tree, bone, uh, those sorts of things. So those things, the sign that a person has that exhibits uh, pretty much from birth delineates what culture they belong in. So all the flame sign people have a culture together. It doesn't matter whether they're flame sign elves, dwarves, goblins, trolls, all living together. What unifies them is their sign and what differentiates them is not so much their race or their gender. Um, thinking in this world, it's still because it's um, pre-scientific technology, it's sort of magic-based technology, uh, still based predominantly binary because procreation is a you know, base function of, of all life. So a, a, a person's race in this world really only matters for procreation because only elves can have uh, it, it can't interbreed with each other, and only humans with each other, and only ogres with each other. There's not um, any crossbreeding between the different races. It's, it doesn't seem genetically possible for them. So likewise, the, the difference of you know, male and female uh, genitalia is, is, is a distinctive factor in that women have to carry the babies. Um, but because of magic, and there's a whole thing Steven Erickson with his Malazan Book of the Fallen series talks about in their creation of it. Magic, he treats it, and this is how I'm treating it also, is, is a, um, helps level the playing field and the differences between the genders so that even though you might have a big brute of a male person that could physically dominate a female person, that female person um, might have an equal amount of either physical bruteness or magical power that can counteract the physical bruteness of some sort. So they're not um, relegated to secondary citizenship, as is so common, in, at least in our world, or you know, has been traditionally. Um, and sex, again, queerness is okay, and so uh, because sex revolves around procreation, um, it, they view, these people view sex between two partners as fine as long as... Yeah, I don't know if we'll necessarily address consensuality so much, um, because it is—it's intended to be a slightly more primitive society. But 
having sex with people of, of the same sign or one of the near related signs to, to the character's own sign is okay and it doesn't matter whether it's male or female because again this 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 difference between the two is mitigated because of magic so they're not um, so women in particular are not you know not looked down upon or treated all that differently so then what happens at the end of your whole legacy game and living empires and reading the stories we then skip thousand two thousand years We're not sure exactly how much time will be skipped yet um, and we come to a what you know a, a setting living metropolis that's relatively um, consistent with our current world in terms of technology um, but something has happened in that uh, the races can now intermingle. So elves and goblins can, if they have sex together, could potentially produce children. So now mixed breed children are relatively, or at least somewhat if not relatively common. Um, but there's a social uh, backlash against this is, is there's going to be people who think, no, you've got to stick with your own kind. So all of a sudden, this Living Metropolis is actually going to address elements of racism for the first time in this world's uh, your true racism between races because the signs have all disappeared. Um, between Living Empires and Living Metropolis, nobody has signs anymore because all of that is gone. And for reasons you'll have to discover through reading the stories and or playing the games. Um, but the world is dominated by all these sort of massive monolithic city-states run by you know, a, a handful of corporations. So there's maybe a hint of sort of cyberpunk-ishness. Not necessarily it's all going to be computer-based things, but in that it's corporate-dominated world. Um, sex, uh, the, the sexual act is acceptable between you know, consenting adults, doesn't matter, a male, female, they have gone through, the, so sometime between empires and metropolis, society at large has gone through the discovery process of the gender spectrum. So that doesn't matter, it's, again, still only predominantly relevant for the, the, the characters, the people in this world that want to procreate. Um, but uh, what is, considered by much of their culture as prohibitive or distasteful is actual sex between races because then you might accidentally or willingly produce mixed breeds which big swaths of the culture do not want to see happen so that's going to be a big theme in living metropolis is uh, how do all these up-and-coming mixed breed people uh, operate in the world that seems to not uh, respect or maybe even not want them in, in many regards. So we're going to, so I also in Living Metropolis, as a little side note, it's going to be superhero based. So there are going to be superpowers. And is that going to be related to the magic that once populated the world in Living Empires? Or is it something entirely new? Huh. You're going to have to stay tuned and find out. Play the games, read the stories. But there will be superheroes. And many, if not most of them, are going to be... Uh, drag characters and what drag means in this world is not about gender because they've gotten over the gender hump and are, are accepting of all sorts of genders so people dressing up in drag so maybe you have a, a half goblin half elf character that is a drag performer but dresses up as a as a human or an ogre um, so they're using um, drag or vice versa you've got somebody who's purebred but wants to um, exhibits uh, traits of a different race. So a good, drag goes both ways. Pure breed people dressing up and performing as other races. Um, and mixed breed people dressing up and performing as maybe pure races or different versions of mixed breedness. So it's all about uh, racial distinction for drag and is not based upon uh, gender distinction at all, which is different from how it's evolved in our world. Then, from Living Metropolis, our superhero stories, skip another 1,000, 2,000 years. Again, not sure on the exact uh, time gap between these two, but we get to our science fiction setting where all of these mixed breed people have come to dominate the world. So we know right up front that that's, that's the end result, is that 
there aren't pure reads anymore because there's going to be roughly 54 races that have gone out, distinct races, and uh, terraform, terraforms different planets and now populate their, the galaxy. Um, but they are all derived from these mixed breed people who are all derived from these other pure breed people um, in living empires. Um, so they're going to have all sorts of different traits. So in the, if you don't know any of this, you'll look at, oh, look at all these different alien cultures. They are not alien to each other. In living starship, all of these people have evolved from the exact same planet the exact, and the, the same uh, six races. And they have yet, in all of their centuries of terraforming and exp uh, planets and exploring space, have yet to discover any sort of alien life form greater than you know, single cell, like amoebas. Um, so they, so at the opening of Living Starship, that's a whole different thing. Um, but uh, race, once again, only matters for procreation because for some reason, it, uh, sex between different those fifty four different races no longer produces mixed breeds. Um, there's they're purebred into and of themselves, but culturally, for sex. Anything goes as long as it's consensual. It doesn't matter between race, between whatever gender identity you might even might even have. Um, the idea here is that gender identity is is really a thing of the past, and people can. Um, uh, who who is it? Is it Ian M. Banks? I think. Or do, I think it's called Culture Series, maybe, because I've read a couple of the books. It's been a while. Um, to pick for people who can live, the humans can live for, and I, it's not even just humans, can live for hundreds of years, if not thousands, I don't remember for sure. But during their lifetime, they might spend some of their lifetime as a female, some of their lifetime as a male. Presumably there's everything in between. Um, see some of that here. Uh, some people will just sort of habitually, you know, and surgically switch between races, uh, races, uh, genders. But gender isn't even a consideration so much so that there aren't even gendered pronouns. Gender is, is, I'm removing it even from the language of the stories and the games, which will be a bit jarring at first until you acclimate to it. Um, but culture in the Living Starship World is imposed by the central citadel government that controls um, and governs and oversees the entire galaxy. So here, you say, have sex with whoever you want. Um, Gender doesn't matter at all. Um, sex still, uh, you know, procreation still only happens between, uh, sp uh, uh, is not interracial, which is once again limited to race, even though there are now 54 races. Though a couple of them might be dead at this time, you know, be extinct at this time. So maybe it's only 51 or 52. Uh, but procreation also doesn't matter so much because Anybody can switch things up and have a womb if they want to physically have a baby, but what's going to be predominantly common is babies can be grown in birth centers, in a laboratory, if you will. The, the classic test tube baby, right? Um, but uh, so since babies can be grown, uh, society and culture isn't even necessarily family-centric in the way we consider families. There might be segments of society and certain people that adhere to uh, what we would call traditional norms of you know, parents and raising children. Um, but here, all of that has changed and evolved um, to something entirely different. So, so that's a big old rambling overview of sort of thematically how I'm addressing race, gender, uh, sex, and culture in my epic living saga of fantasy, superhero, and science fiction stuff. So stay tuned both here on this video blog, uh, on the website cheekydingo.com. Um, okay, sometimes maybe we'll chat about it too on our uh, game, uh, our little entertaining game nights that Lulu all night and I do. Every Thursday we live stream a game. Lulu dresses up in drag as one of the characters. I dress up in really crappy cosplay as, as a different character in a game. And we play the game for your entertainment. Um, but thank you once again for tuning in. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment all you want. I would certainly love to hear what your thoughts and feelings are in regards to queer representation in, in the tabletop game industry.
what would you like to see? Do you have thoughts or ideas of things that maybe I could include in some of this living saga? Possibly didn't talk about, maybe I haven't even considered it yet. So I'd love to hear from you and what your thoughts and ideas, hopes and aspirations are. And I will chat with you next week. Cheers.